Good morning and welcome to On The Road Reviews with me, Jamie Green. And today we're out at the beautiful Elscombe Business Park with this, the Mark IV Ford Focus ST. And here it is. The model we're testing today is the 2.3 EcoBoost, which the engine is specifically lifted out of the outgoing RS and put into this, detuned to produce 280 brake horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. This car does also come with a two liter Eco Blue diesel engine producing 187 brake horsepower, so nowhere near as punchy as the petrol. And for my opinion, not as good looking from the back. With the petrol, you get this lovely twin bore exhaust system and diffuser setup at the rear. With the diesel though, you end up with a twin exit exhaust on one side and a pretty standardized black ST line bumper. The ST comes in a range of seven colors, of which the Orange Fury and Performance Blue are exclusive to the type. The one we have here today is the absolutely gorgeous pearl ruby red. Uh, this color has unfortunately now been discontinued and swapped out by Ford for a slightly lighter shade called Fantastic Red. And so now we look at the most important part of this ST, the thumping heart, the 2.3 litre four cylinder EcoBoost engine, which is producing just shy of 280 brake horsepower. Ford claim this car will do 60 in 5.7 seconds, and it has a limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. Now, one thing manufacturers seem to always forget when they build cars like these is they need to be usable every single day. However, for me, I don't think Ford have missed that point on this ST, as something I'm gonna show you right now. The boot on the Mark IV ST sits at 273 litres with the seats up and 1,250 litres with the seats down. Now, however, if you get the estate variant of this car, you'll be treated to an absolutely glorious 541 litres with the rear seats up and 1,620 litres with the seats down, which is absolutely incredible for a car of this type. The ST we have with us today has the optional panoramic roof, uh, which is a thousand pound option from a factory and adds 20 kilograms. But in my opinion, on black contrast with the red, looks absolutely fantastic. The standard wheels on these car are these 19 inch magnetite gray alloys, which in contrast with the red calipers look absolutely fantastic. I must now note that that little ST logo on the caliper isn't a standard feature. That is a decal that I purchased myself and fitted myself because this car actually belongs to me. Now, when you look at the inside, you can tell straight away this is a performance model by the door seals, which are logo with their full performance logo and these absolutely gorgeous bucket seats from Recaro. These seats are half leather, half Alcantara, and the only option you can have on this car. They come heated as standard, and they feel absolutely brilliant on long distance drives as well. The Mark IV ST comes with a very chunky steering wheel, embroidered with the ST logo at the bottom and a flat bottom. It also has a dashboard, which looks absolutely fantastic and very well designed with the beautiful red needles. And you can flick through your options. You can even have your fuel economy, your settings, information about your phone, audio, navigation, driver assistance, and then you've got the standardized performance figures, which I like to have the digital speedo up most of the time. However, if you are a little bit more racy, you can have your oil pressure, temperature, and turbo pressure, more importantly. There we go, nice little bit of turbo pressure there. The Mark IV ST comes fitted with Ford's latest Sync 3 system, which has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay availability. It's also fitted with this lovely, lovely simplistic 8-inch uh, touchscreen fitted with Navi as standard. As we come down the car, you'll find a very easy to use control panel for the radio stack and the dual zone climate control system, which again is very self-explanatory, very easy to use. And also features probably my favorite feature on the ST, a heated steering wheel, which is absolutely beautiful in this country. The Mark IV ST comes with a selection of gearboxes on the petrol. You get a six speed manual or a seven speed auto. Uh, the diesel, however, only comes with the six speed manual. Now, when I first bought this car, I wasn't entirely sold on the looks of the rear. My opinion, it looked too much like a Fiat Tipo and the Mazda 3. However, I've now owned this car for a year and I've covered 13,500 miles in it and I'm absolutely in love with the way that thing looks. From the rear, you've got the really aggressive diffuser, the lights that bend around the side, it all blends in beautifully with the red and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So out of five for looks on the new XT, I am definitely gonna give it a five. Right, now we're taking you around the outside and through the interior a little bit. I think it's time we take it for a drive, don't you?
quote, this car will do between 34 and 39 miles to the gallon. However, in real world conditions over the last 2,000 miles, I've averaged between 29 and 33,000, which with a 55 litre fuel tank will do you about 360 miles from a tank of fuel. Now, we're gonna go out in the open road for a bit. We're gonna take it to a road test and see what this car can do, see how it feels to drive in sport mode, normal mode, and how we uh, take our final opinion of the car. Now, the first thing to mention that is probably a crime that all modern car manufacturers are committing now is they are fitting their cars with sound synthesizers. Now, what that is, is it's a device under the bonnet that pumps fake engine noise into the cabin. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because it adds to the driving experience of the car. However, it is a little bit annoying that you don't get some of that raw power that you used to get for the Mark II and it's five pot because that used to absolutely roar in the cabin. But, to be, if I'm honest, I don't care. I don't care, it's fake. <laughs> it sounds fantastic inside this cabin. This car has been kitted out with some of Ford Performance's finest bits off of their other cars. For example, it's got the anti-lag system off of the Ford GT and the Ranger Raptor. Now what that does is it holds the throttle open just a little bit when the driver lifts off to keep the turbo spinning so that your, res your throttle response when you get back on the power is absolutely immediate. And if I'm honest, it is absolutely immediate and it is fantastic to get this car singing. Uh, this car is also fitted with a launch control system. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's absolutely rubbish. Um, we'll, talk, we'll demonstrate a little bit later on, but it's not great, if I'm honest. This car is also fitted with an electronic slip differential from Ford, and what that does, that can send 100% of the torque to a single front wheel to give you the best exit out of a corner through the traction in the front wheels, and that will give you better lap times. Whether that's useful on the road, uh, maybe in wet conditions, yeah. Uh, but I can't see it being a racy thing for the boy racer in all of us, so I think that's a pretty good feature. The ST we're in today is fitted with the 250 pound option performance pack. Now what that gives me is something called continuously controlled damping in the rear, uh, where the car is monitoring the road surface every 0.3 a second and adjusting its setup ever so slightly to give us the best handling and the best traction through the corners. Uh, it also gives us the ambient lighting in the cabin as well, which you won't see on the road test day, unfortunately, because it is a daytime road test. Um, when you engage the sport mode, you also get the rev matching, which comes up, which when you change down, matches the revs so you don't have to heel and tow, and the car is always ready to go. Absolute hell for leather. Comparably to the Mark III ST, this car has optional drive modes of wet slippery, which is very, very good in the winter, as I have tested that several times. Uh, the normal mode, which is very nice for your everyday commuting, your everyday shopping trip. You've got sport mode for when you're feeling five years old. And if you have got the performance pack like I have on this, you get track mode. Now, track mode is a lot of fun. Track mode basically is the same as sport mode, but it disengages the stability control and the traction control. And it is designed for throwing it around a racetrack as fast as possible with no limits on it at all. The new Focus ST comes with the fastest steering rack ever fitted to one of the ST variants. Uh, two locks turn to turn, which makes the car very pointy into corners. And you can really throw it into a corner and have the confidence that it will go there. It's such a good little system to use. The car comes fit with standard a BNO sound system, which is absolutely fantastic. The subwoofer is actually fitted underneath the load bay in the boot, uh, underneath which is also a spare tire, which would have been something useful to know uh, when I popped one of my tires over, when I had it over a thousand miles. Unfortunately, uh, I run it on a flat tire. Whoops. This car is also fitted with anti-collision assist as well. So if the car detects a collision is gonna happen, you'll get an audible warning in the cockpit which will shut off all your radio, all your music, and it will just beep at you really, really loud and you'll get a red flash in the dashboard. Uh, and when this happens, if you don't acknowledge it, you don't hit the brakes yourself, the car will brake for you. And that is a shock to the system, believe you me. 
This car comes with a lot of electronic gadgets as well, like the lane keep assist, which that works very well. It could almost drive itself, but if you do try and take your hands off the steering wheel, you do get an audible warning in the cockpit to put your hands back on the steering wheel, because it's not classed as an autopilot system, it's just there to just pull you in if you're just straying from the lines. You also get adaptive speed limiter and adaptive cruise control, which has four settings on it. Each uh, setting is a two second gap, so you can have it anywhere between two and eight seconds putting the car in front. So you can really use it all year round, all weather conditions, and it is very, very responsive. This car is 10 millimeters lower than your standard Ford Focus with 20% stiffer damping at the front and 13% stiffer damping at the back. And this makes for some fantastic corner experiences because the car feels planted. There's very limited body roll when you absolutely put your foot through the floor. The gear change is smooth and the car just goes. It is such a laugh. Unfortunately, there is no custom drive mode in this car. I would absolutely love to have the softness of the suspension in comfort mode geared up with the sound sympathizer setting and the rev matching that you get in sport mode. It would just make this car so good to have that adjustable mode. As it is right now, you can only have it in the four standard setups that it comes built with. So now we come down to the point where I have to tell you my honest opinion on owning this car. And I'm happy to report that it is a fabulous all-rounder. It can do the long-range commuting and the long-range driving in relative comfort as your standard focus would. Yet, when you're feeling like a child and you want the, the exhaust to pop and crackle and bang, you can sit, pop it in sport mode and go on a B-road and make it pop on every gear change. Add to that the fuel economy you can get out of this car and you really do make for a fantastic long distance commuter. You know, the running costs are not cheap. They're not, I'm not gonna lie to you, they are cheap. But they're not ludicrously expensive. I mean, I cover probably 1,200 miles a month and I do anywhere between 200 and 250 pound a month on fuel. Driving now along the A120, it's very quiet, it's very refined, it's very comfortable. The steering is nice and light. I can feel what's going on through my buttocks. And I just, the only way I can describe this car is every time I drive it, I fall a little bit more in love with it because it just has a personality that the last one didn't. But then when I hit sport mode, drop it into third and boot the floor, just listen to that. It accelerates so quickly. Now, the Focus ST is going to be the daddy of the range for a little while because Ford announced a few months ago that they're not going to be bringing a Focus RS for the Mark IV to market, which is a real shame. But at the same time, they've done such a wonderful job on this car that I think they can be forgiven. Now don't get me wrong, this car is not gonna keep up with a Golf R or a Civic Type R at all. It's a much less powerful car, it's a much more refined car. However, there are options. You do have the Mountune 330 horsepower option, or the Dream Science 330 power option, which I'll be reviewing in a few weeks time. And now unfortunately I must come on to the point of price of this car and it is not a happy one. The diesel starts at just over £29,000 and the petrol similarly just over £32,000. But now the car is very very well equipped as standard but if you want a couple of little options on it like the heads up display, like the panoramic roof, you're going to have to pay more. Um, the car I'm driving here today tops out just over £36,000 which you can get a similar Type R for, and Type R is just quicker. Saying that, I honestly, honestly, and this isn't me being biased, because this is my car that I'm driving today, this isn't me being biased, I have driven both cars extensively. The Civic Type R is just savage in everything it does. It doesn't have an ability to be a calm, everyday cruiser, in my opinion. Whereas this, this just rolls and ticks all the boxes, every single one of them, for a hot hatchback. 
As promised guys, we're gonna show you what the launch control system can do. So here we go, you ready? So there you have it, the first review on OTR reviews and what a car to start with, the Mark IV Ford Focus ST. I mean, what more could you possibly want from a hot hatchback? It's got a big boot, it's got a big engine, it's good on fuel. It's a fantastic all-rounder. When you wanna go commuting in it and have a smooth, soft drive, it will do it. When you wanna thrash it around a B road and go faster, it will encourage you to go faster in sport and track mode. And what a car it really is. The only two downsides I can really find with this car are firstly, the price. It is very expensive for what it is. It's a similar price to its competitors and yet they are faster and more powerful. The second issue that I have with this car is I would love a custom drive mode on it. Now, I love the drive modes I have, but I would love to have the soft suspension setting for comfort, combine that with the rev matching and the weightiness of the steering wheel to feel more feel through the road really. Apart from that, I think this is absolutely fantastic car if you are thinking about one i absolutely implore you go and test drive one go down to your ford dealer and ask if they can take you out because i tell you what you will not regret it my name's jamie green and i'd like to thank you for joining me here on otr reviews for my first ever video if you liked it please hit, uh, hit the like button give me subscribe because i am planning to do a little bit more in the next few weeks um i want to grow this channel and there you go. My verdict on this car is a solid 8.5 out of 10. It's an absolutely fantastic car, but I've given my recommendations for what I think would make the next generation just a little bit better than this one. My name's Jamie Green. You've joined me here today on OTR Reviews. Thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button for more content like this. In the next few weeks, I'll be reviewing the Dream Science 330 Remat kit for this very car and planning in the next few months to hopefully get some more hot hatchbacks, some more saloon cars out for testing on OTR reviews. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you later.